Well, the time has come to start working on something that I've been having a little bit of anxiety about for some time, and that is the aluminum molding that goes right here on the corner of the trailer where the roof meets the siding. The trailer was originally shipped with this gutter rail that attaches to the wall like this, but I'm going to replace it with something different. The gutter rail just covers the side of the trailer. I think it would be better if I had something that covered both the wall and the roof of the coach. So here's the pieces I bought. I have four sticks of 16 foot corner trim. I wanted the brushed aluminum finish, but the supplier that's local only had the white powder coated finish. So I'll have to make do with that. It looks like my truck is ready for the joust. I was able to haul these pieces by bolting in a piece of scrap steel to one of the fender bolts and it held good enough for the ride home. Only trouble is we all had to pile in the truck from the passenger side. So let's take these pieces off so we can get a better look at them. Just like the original gutter rail, these will attach to the side of the trailer, but instead of having a channel that runs along the outside edge, there's a lip that extends about a quarter of an inch onto the roof of the rig. Now I mentioned a minute ago that I was having some stress about this project, and that is because of the difficulty of bending that rigid aluminum around these tight radiuses of the camper. Now the trouble with bending this stuff is that if I try to bend it by hand, ever so carefully, it doesn't do what I want it to do. Instead of making a nice swooping curve, it just kind of crinkles. Now the person I bought this stuff from said that in order to install it, just go ahead and attach it to the side of the RV that's straight and then very slowly and gingerly work it around those sharp corners with the aid of a soft touch and a rubber mallet. That was extremely optimistic. I tried that and for a corner as sharp as I need to make this stuff, there's no way that method is going to work. So I've spent countless hours trying to find an effective way to bend this stuff without a lot of success. Probably my most ambitious failed attempt is this machine that I fabricated. It is two pieces of one quarter inch plate cut in the correct curve with an arm that has a ball bearing mounted to it. And my idea was that perhaps I could sandwich the piece of trim between the two pieces of steel, hold this piece right here, and roll the ball bearing around it, making the curve that I need without this inner edge crinkling. And it was marginally successful. However, I still have these cute little ruffles. This isn't a tutu. I don't want these ruffles. So I went back to the drawing board and I had a little bit of an epiphany. I realized that all of my methods up to this point tried to compress this inner edge in order to make the curve and that's why it was crinkling. What if I tried to, instead of compress this area to make the curve, just go ahead and expand this top edge? More on that later. What I want to do now is figure out how to get the paint off of these pieces. I really like the look of bare metal, and with all of the bending that these things are going to be put through, there's no way a painted finish would survive. My first attempt was to use my propane torch and just burn the paint off, but that didn't work as well as I had hoped and it created a lot of toxic fumes. So my second idea was to use my orbital sander to remove the paint, but that method was really slow and it went through about a sheet of sandpaper for every foot of trim that I process. I don't have unlimited time or unlimited sandpaper, so it's time to move on to plan C, which is drive up to Wally World at 9 o'clock last night and pick up some paint stripper. This is Rust-Oleum Aircraft Remover Professional Grade, which interestingly enough is not for use on aircraft. Hmm, the great mysteries of life. Anyway, I applied three coats of this stuff on the aluminum this morning, let it percolate for a while, and then went after it with a wire wheel. And just like that, I have a classic brushed aluminum finish. Now, let's see about putting a bend in this piece. 
The first thing I want to do is trace the contour of this right rear corner of the trailer, then take a measurement so I know where to start my curve. Back over here at the work table now, I'm going to put this trim piece through a process called annealing. When you anneal a piece of aluminum, you heat it up to about 800 degrees, and when that happens, it softens the metal and makes it a little bit more pliable and easier to bend. It so happens that black Sharpie ink disappears at just about the correct temperature for annealing aluminum. So I'm going to mark the area that I want to bend with my pen and then heat it up with my torch. I need to be careful here because my target temperature is 800 degrees but aluminum melts at 1200 and if that happens it's game over. A little bit more, a little bit more, don't melt. Okay, I think that should do it. So the metal is ready to go. Time to unveil my super high-tech bending apparatus. This is a two-piece unit of my own design and it's more than just a pretty face. All I need to do is pinch the piece of aluminum between these two sets of quarter-inch steel plates and as soon as it's tightened securely in place I'll concentrate on bending, not breaking, and just give it a friendly tug. And that, my friends, is the beginnings of this. I've got a lot of work to do. After I make that first bend, I just need to adjust my tool the slightest amount and repeat. Again. And again. And again. Oh. Oh. Oh, $50 a piece. Oh dear. Well, trial and error. Sometimes it's a little bit costly. Maybe I just bared down on that a little bit too much. I really think this will work. I do have another piece cleaned up. I'll go for round two and see if I fare any better. Well, this second piece is going a little bit better. It's taking forever though. As you can see, it's almost dark out here. I've got my drop light set up. So hopefully I can get this thing bent before dinner time. Unless I break this one too. If that happens, I'm giving up for the night and the Shasta can just sit out here and think about how sharply curved its corners are. Yeah. What's this? Progress? I just had a really good idea and it involves a jigsaw and this piece of plywood. This is a reference. We're not there yet. Just a few more bites. Hey, that's getting close. One more should do it. Is that it? I think we're there, folks. So now I will very carefully take my sculpture out of the mold. Okay, it still needs a little bit of work right here on this edge where it curled over and I'll take care of that in a minute. But I think overall, I beat the odds. Before I work on this edge, I'm going to re-anneal the area just to make sure the metal is as soft as possible. I don't want any cracks up here. To fix up this area, I'm going to use a metal cutout of the correct radius. This is two pieces of quarter inch steel put together. It's part of a previous failed metal bending experiment, but luckily I'm putting it to use here and the jigsaw blade that I ruined making these cuts was not for nothing. So I'll just nestle the piece in here and give a gentle finesse with a rubber mallet. I need to be really careful flattening out this curve because if I'm not, this can happen. I'll just call it patina. Okay, I think that'll just about do it. Let's see how it fits on the trailer. Not too bad. Just a few more minor tweaks and it should be ready to install. Well, I think the bends are close enough that it will work. Time to attach the trim to the trailer with some screws. I'll start up here at the top. This is just a preliminary installation to verify proper fit, so there's no butyl tape applied to this piece, and I'm not worried about getting screws in every hole either. Well folks, I think it'll work. 
Next I'll move on to the front piece. Luckily this curve is not as sharp as the one in the rear. So I need to measure, anneal, and bend. Shaping these pieces of aluminum is the type of job where I knew nothing about it going in, but by the time I'm finished, I'll be an expert. And I'll never use this skill again in my life. Hopefully. <laughs> so I think this piece is ready to go. Let's see if it matches up. Good enough for me. I'll move back here now and trim off this little bit of overlap with the Dremel tool, then pop in a few screws. I've got all of the aluminum corner molding attached, and now that I know the fit is good, I can remove it, apply butyl tape, and reinstall permanently. It's surprising how much of this tape we've gone through. So far, I've ordered 15 rolls at 20 feet each, and it doesn't come cheap either. So here I've got a continuous strip of tape laid down on this piece, and I'm also filling in these low spots on the trailer to help ensure the best seal possible. I need to be careful where I stick this, because once it's stuck, it won't want to move. I've no drill. Now I'll use the existing holes to line this up. Well, if I can find the existing holes, well, there you are. Uh -huh. Proof positive. This thin aluminum is very easily deformed, so I'm tightening the screws slowly and evenly throughout the piece. To get this trim to fit just right, I need to use a little bit of... I'm taking care to keep the trim tight up against the trailer roof so that as I tighten it down, hopefully butyl tape will fill in the small gap. I have enough screws in the piece of trim to hold it in place. Now I'll go back and fill in the remaining holes. On the end of the aluminum, I left a little bit of butyl tape running wild so that when I install this piece, the seam in the tape and the trim won't be in the same place. Just a few more screws to put in, and that should finish it up. There! The corner trim is done! Good riddance! That job has haunted me ever since I removed the original molding. I didn't know what I would replace it with, or especially how to create bends in the new material. But here we are! Victorious! Next, we'll jump back inside and knock out a few things in there. Thanks for watching!